couple weeks left and change. Where's your Where's your head at as you you close out your term? You know, I'm feeling really proud of the work we've been able to accomplish, particularly in the area of COVID, um, but some other really fundamental things for Seattle, and I'm hopeful for the future. Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin has spent almost half her term trying to navigate a global pandemic. How do you define your legacy? My time as mayor has been defined by COVID-19. It has been the hardest time our city's ever been through. And we were the first in, we had no handbook, no guidance, no help from the federal government. Seattle, I think when it's written, will be the city that got it right. We have the lowest incidence of disease, hospitalization and mortality rate of any city in America. Yet it is also hard to avoid how the issues of homelessness and public safety have clouded her term. Issues exacerbated by the pandemic and a social reckoning. Without a sense of public trust, there's no legitimacy in a police department here or anywhere else. You know, for example, in crowd management, we saw last year that there was so much more that we could do to get it right. Public safety is at risk in the city. And I'm hoping that the new mayor coming in with the city council is able to have a conversation about what people really need in every neighborhood in this city and not just as a political bumper sticker. We have lost too many officers. It takes too long for 911 to come. And if we want more officers to come, we have to let them know we appreciate the work they're doing. Yes, they have to be well-trained. They have to have constitutional policing. They have to make sure that they are community-based. Why is public safety at risk? 1,400 to 1,600 officers is what you need for patrol in a city of our size. Um, but we have only about 1,000 deployable officers. But Durkin will also likely be credited, in hindsight, with solving a more than decade-long quest to build a new sports and entertainment complex at Seattle Center, serving as the closer Guys, on a National up? Hockey League deal. We're going to go get a hockey team. Sports. I, I know you like sports, and it, some people that are civically engaged look at this and say, hey, this is not the biggest issue in Seattle. It's homelessness. It's, it's public safety. It's affordable housing. Why has this been a, an issue that's been important for you during your term? Having hockey here, I think, is really great for the city. It's great for youth. We've, we've lacked that before. And we're going to get the Sonics back. And I think having those kinds of teams is always good for city. People can fight about a lot of different things, but if their team's playing well, they're all for the team. Um, you know, I can walk through that arena and I see people who, you know, give me a high five that I know are thinking, you know, they're probably not a political supporter, but they're for the Kraken. So when is Seattle going to get the Sonics back? We talked in January. You said you were very optimistic after talking with NBA Commissioner Adam Silver. I am very optimistic, and I will be really disappointed if Bruce Harrell can't do it in his first term. I think the NBA learned from moving the Sonics that moving a team has a lot of complications. Um, so I think a lot of it's going to depend on the economics coming out of the pandemic, and the NBA owners now are open to it. So no timetable. I'd say within I, five years at the outside, hopefully three. Do you have any regrets? You know, this has been an incredible honor. It's been hard the last two years, um, very challenging for me and for my family. Um, but I think that, you know, history calls you at different times. And I think that when history's written again, they really will say that Seattle led the way. Um, and I'm, I am honored that I could have that role.